What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What's good? Oh, Jay Wayne already uh, already wasted the fresh pop, huh? Just went right in, huh? All right, all right, all right. I well, we got you. the pre-recorded one. Yeah, it comes on and, and and Zoom doesn't pick up the pop as well. Like when we were here together doing it with a mixer, that pop could be fresh. And if it was fresh, it would sound fresh. If it was bad, it was bad, and then we get made fun of. But it, it just doesn't always work with the Zoom. Lost its flavor. Well, we got some funky flavor coming for you today. Going to take a look at a little uh, ADP. So this is our first look at off-season top 50. Top 50. Yeah, good top, call. Good call. Top have, must have. You, that's what you want, YouTube. <laughs> By the way, if you're listening on YouTube, shout out to you. This is our first <laughs> look at off-season Dynasty ADP via DLF. We're using their ADP today. Um, that's usually what we go off of. They use six drafts to come up with their numbers. Um, obviously it could change any room is different at any particular time, but it's an okay baseline here to go off of and, and talk about, uh, these values will continue to change throughout the off season due to free agency, NFL draft and off season narratives that get built. We're creative. We have, we're not there yet, but it will certainly happen. Um, uh, and you know, players values will, will fall and rise. Um, the point of this really isn't really to go into detail of who you should buy and sell out of these top 50 just yet. We're not going to get into, like I said, great detail here. We're just going to start to get familiar with where these values are and where they stand and start to learn the market for the off season. Cause I mean, let's face it, the off season of dynasty is where it's the most fun to, to trade around and have a good time. That's why we play dynasty because it's year round. Uh, right. and it's, it doesn't it's, end baby. It's absolutely imperative to learn, you know, which guys you should be going after because the value is down on. And like I said, every league is a little different and some guys, you know, they're a homer to this or that. So some guys value might just be escalated because they're on a certain guy's team. Jay Wayne likes Clemson. So a Clemson guy might be harder to get from his team than oh, some other sure. teams. Um, Luckily but, for me, they're all really good. So it's cool to have them. You need to either out. be looking for long-term value in the off season that you can get that, that didn't necessarily perform or perform for some reason. Cause some guys just stay hated on and other guys could be just okay and really elevate their value. Those are the ones you probably want to stay away from. You want to try to grab those long-term guys or guys that you think will be good f uh, flips for, Hey, this guy could e I could see an easy path to him gaining value from where he left this off season to how the season is going to start. And, you know, that's kind of a risk reward thing. So you kind of have to weigh those out, uh, but that's kind of the, what, what we're trying to do is start to start that process right now. Let's Got anything do to add? It. All right. <laughs> um, again, not going to hit every single player on this list. Uh, just the ones that jumped out while we were going through it here. Um, and some of them might be different to other people who jumps out. If you're listening via podcast, we do have a visual aid on the screen on YouTube with about 24 players at a time. So you can better follow along on there. Uh, and while you're at it, you might as well hop over there, hit that subscribe button, like some stuff, help your boys out. Greatly appreciated. Even so, if you don't like YouTube to go over there, hit subscribe, like a couple videos, just, just look us up. You, yeah. you you guys have been with us out on the podcast forever. We're trying to do some stuff on YouTube. H hook a brother up. Appreciate help it. your boys out. All people, right, people helping people, or go leave a leave a five star review on iTunes if you haven't done that. That's still cool. Yeah, Appreciate that's still that. great. Still great. Um, All right, let's do it. So obviously, number one CMC that hasn't really changed. Not much you can do to to get him off there. If you want to sell CMC in the off season for a haul, be my guest. I'm keeping CMC. Um, so so here, what we're showing you here is just you know kind of read along on the screen. We're going to show you how it changed from last month now coming into this year, right? Right, exactly. So those so are the numbers some, you're looking at. Some values increased from the end of the season to the off season and some, you know, decreased, obviously. So we're going to go through some of that and just, again, ones that stood out. So Kamara jumps up to the two spot. DK Metcalf was holding it down up there. He drops down to five. Kamara at two. Is that just recency bias of six TDs winning your fantasy league? Not that Kamara doesn't have the talent to be at two, but he's... Sure. he's I mean, uh, Kamara's a beast, but he is going on 26, right? Which we just did a... Uh, 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 a show about what to do with your older running backs, depending on the situation of your team. And, 
And I mean, if you want to take Kamara too, that's cool. But that is one hundred percent recency bias. And the same thing with DK Metcalf falling, right? He, Russ stopped freaking or cooking, whatever it was you guys wanted to let Russ do. And so DK didn't didn't close out the year super strong. I mean, I think he had a good game there at the end, but like he tailed off just like the rest of that team. So that I think what we're going to see a lot here is recency bias, which will cause it to change a little bit moving forward. But there's not very many games left, and so this. This will change as, off, as, as as the combine hits and as free agency hits and all that. But for the most part, you're seeing a lot. You'll see a lot of recency bias as we go through this. Yeah, and it looks like there's an era ending in uh, New Orleans. So Breeze will be out of there. He's so gone. Kamara value may continue to maybe drop back down as the offseason goes and more people get a little upset about that. Breeze, I'm kind of hit or miss on. Like, he really obviously wasn't challenging anybody deep. So, like, you saw what the Bucks did. They just kind of went man hard, pressed up, and made wanted you to get those receivers to get some separation deeper and have Drew take those shots, which didn't look like he was really necessarily able to do. We saw Taysom Hill in there. Kamara's numbers kind of waxed and waned a little bit. Um, could be good if they let if they take the reins off of uh, Taysom Hill and let him run a little more. Uh, that's always good for the offense. But one thing that the Saints do very, very well is draft, draft, draft. They, they, they draft extremely well, and they've got a pretty good offensive line. Not sure what the contracts are on there. Uh, but again, uh, Kamara will probably be just fine. Uh, maybe just a little less dump downs, although, I mean... They Maybe still James are comes scheming in there and dumps him into it down. space, though, and they love that little option route, and and mm-hmm. he's going to get – Sean. as long as Sean Payton is there, I feel great about my Kamara stock. Sure. JT jumps all the way up to three. Yeah, Number boy. three from 19. You Suck surp- it, haters. Usurp Saquon Barkley, uh, moving him to four. So that was that was pretty exciting there for for you, for me have been you, we, we did a couple of different things in the all and in, in season we did stuff with our patrons live shows and stuff um and just i just kept hammering stick with jt don't get discouraged and this is nice to see this at least for for the end of this season here uh barkley at four i i, I could go either way i don't really i'm not upset about it just don't sell saquon barkley unless yeah. your team's just absolutely abysmal and you have no chance and you need to reload it's not the time to sell him right now, even if that's I mean, what he's you still up do. pretty high, but you know, yeah, st- but we well, dropped all the way are, down to four. Yeah. Just let him get back <laughs> on the field. I liked what you saw from Wayne Gallman playing in that giants Ooh. offense. So I like, I like Saquon's chances of coming back. Joey judge looks like he's uh, a decent coach and has that locker room going the right way. DK Metcalf at five. I definitely couldn't have pulled the trigger at two. I don't think I could pull the trigger at five. You got any more than running backs? I need yeah. <laughs> two <Touché>. Jay. <laughs> Jay. <laughs> there are there are a few more. Yeah. There's a few more that'll get you high for hours, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get Dalvin. I need that Dalvin. Um yeah, Devon, I ahead. love DK. He's always too expensive, man. Someone's yeah. always there to pull the trigger. And then there's always a point in the season where I'm like, damn, I wish I'd have done it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't own any DK. Got too expensive. It's probably going to stay too expensive. Maybe in a cheaper startup, I'll get them just to have them. Or maybe in a team where I need to reload, which isn't many right now, uh, I would go after him, but he's hard to acquire. Um, Devon, and obviously the public is telling you how hard it is to acquire him right now with that average of six drafts in DLF's ADP. Devontae Adams, number six, no movement um, from one uh, from the end of the season until now, uh, elder statesman of the first round here, holding it down. How I mean, only wide hate. receiver 28 or older in the first round. Right. You can't hate on that man right now. He is just absolutely killing it. Probably going to be good for another as long as Aaron Rodgers is around and, and he has two and Devonte Adams still has two legs. He'll probably be just fine. I had a team where I have a pretty good team. They just I couldn't get healthy at the right times and put it all together. And he's a little older. I got I got a couple older receivers. So I thought about selling him for a haul at one point. Glad I didn't. I'm excited to load that team back up and roll. Um, Does anybody want to guard him? Because it's like he's always wide. I can't find a defender within 10 feet of this dude. And it's like in the that's in the end zone. It's like. What is going on? How are you not defending this man? I do not understand it, but maybe he just like he is a wicked route runner. I mean, he's an incredible receiver. So, and just the, him and the quarterback on the same page. Rodgers is on another level right now, and Lafleur has just molded the run game and pass game to all look the same. And it's hard to defend them boys right now. So, uh, let's keep it moving. Swift moves up one spot to eight from uh, last month to this month, end of the season to now. Um, 
some people say he's the rookie that some people like him as the rookie RB one. So, I mean, I guess I can't hate on it. Look, we're having, we're having a transition here and we will see that as we go on, we're losing Doesn't matter. Well, some the guys Lions are getting older and these new nice guys things. are, that's true. That is true. And I, I, for a minute, I thought that, uh, that it was Matt Campbell getting hired over there. It's Dan Campbell. Mm. And I couldn't figure out why everybody was upset. I don't really know much about Dan Campbell. <laughs> I know he was a tight ends coach and he's been in new Orleans now for a little while. He's yoked. Um, but all, all team don't want to fist fight him and Sala would be a good fist fight probably. Um, but yeah, I, I guess, like I said, there is a little bit of a changing of the guard going on. Everybody's all the old stalwarts are getting a little older and all these new guys are coming up. Uh, we'll recap some of that as we go. Still so swift, swift at eight. eight is just a little too high, a little too high for you. I, mean, I like I, swift. I love swift. I hate the hate the hate the toss up of the lions right now. So I guess I could give you, yeah. give you that one there. Who wants a piece of the lions? Nobody. <laughs> Uh, Jefferson, Justin Jefferson jumps up from nine to eight, from 18. Um, AJ Brown then settles in at 10. He was holding down the eighth spot, but then got jumped by Swift and Jefferson. Uh, so those two rookies push AJ Brown down, who is a sophomore. Uh, I can't really hate on anything you want to say about Justin Jefferson. Dude's absolutely cooked. As they say, uh, he, as Russell Wilson was getting, He's thrown down to as Russell Wilson was getting demoted to uh, the salad station. Yeah. Justin Jefferson was getting promoted up to executive chef. He's just over there smashing. Yeah. Um, Patton Oswalt's up there pulling the triggers. What, what is, <laughs> a little ratatouille. Yeah. <laughs> ratatouille reference there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, AJ Brown at 10. I can't get upset about that. Um, yeah. I would take. I, would I take, like AJ. I like AJ. I probably I like AJ Brown more than I like DK Metcalf. I think I'm not going to lie. Nah, I don't think so. And I think I would take Tyreek still, who's who's down there at, at eleven over. Yeah, he's AJ Brown. I mean, he's he's next on the list. He drops from seven to eleven in the Swift Jefferson JT escalations here. Um, so I think you, that's your a thoughts little that? cheap for Tyreek. I mean, he's still fairly young, and I mean, what did he do but just ball out all year? So. Yeah, missed a little bit of time, but was still absolutely uh, he's unguardable with Mahomes. So right. A little bit of a discount there. If Josh could, Jacobs, what do you got? Go ahead. If you could trade any of those rookies for Tyreek, would you do it, or would you would you keep those rookies that are ahead of him? I guess I'm down to keep most of those rookies. So, uh, definitely JT. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm fine with that. I guess I'm fine. I guess I'm fine with that for sure. He's probably keeping guy. all but of them because they all looked pretty elite, and they're all just quite a bit younger. But I mean, it just depends on the state of your team, which is what we talk about a lot. T depends on your build, what you need, where you're going. All, All those right. kind of things, but I, I think I would probably I'm okay with that. We'll see as this is new, fresh, so I haven't quite wrapped my mind around everything quite yet, but probably not. Um, Josh Jacobs falls out of the first round. He's settling in at pick 18. Um, thoughts on that? I always really like Josh Jacobs. It's just the Raiders usage, and he was a little banged up this year, which he's been a little banged up here and there. Right. I wanted to say, man, it seems like he shouldn't fall because he's, you know, a young potential stud running back but that's the thing it's still so, kind of seems like a, the potential like if you drafted him where you had to last year it didn't quite work out for you, you finish the season okay but he didn't get you there and I, I like the player I like the talent but the fact they won't give it to him in the passing game really is a huge bummer when it comes to playing PPR which is what you all should be playing out there yeah they had and, some line issues throughout the year where they do have a good line and they just kept getting different COVID and injuries and couldn't get all their guys out there at the same time. But Gruden didn't seem super content every game to just give it to Jacobs. And maybe he just wasn't right. They brought in like every other pass catching back in the whole entire league that didn't have a job and gave him a shot. Yeah. And it's just like, what are y'all doing? Cause he can catch, like he can't right. catch and he's electric yeah. with the ball in his hands, but the reluctance to do it gives me pause as well as like you said, the injury. So I definitely warrant this slide for him, and you know, I, de I I don't think I'm going into next year feeling super great about it. But I, I maybe that's maybe that's a reason to maybe go buy some cheaper Josh Jacobs because that's probably the sentiment among most people. I'd take Jacobs in the second round for sure. Um, All right. So Henry rounds out the first round at twelve. We had a little discussion about these kind of mid mid life crisis of running backs, and Henry was. Pretty much the one we came, or at least I came away with saying that, you know, I'm, I'm, I would be trying to sell Derrick Henry if I could just, uh, you can go back and listen to that, but that's, that's kind of my biggest sell maybe out of these guys right now. 
thoughts? I can't be mad. I, I, I can't be mad either way. If you want to move on from Henry and capitalize yeah. on this 2000 yard season, by all means, if you have a good squad and you're trying to win the championship, sure, next sure. Year, then load it up because you know, what we, what we'll, we'll kind of point out about this draft is that the older guys are getting pushed out a little bit, but not the older running backs because you still need a workhorse running back to, to win a championship. Well, the midlife running backs, the older running backs are already pushed down, but but I mean, but they're still up. They're still all, you know, even being 26 yeah. or older, there's still several of them up there. So sure. Um, definitely more old running backs in the top first two rounds than there are old yeah. wide receivers. And Henry might be a little, little difficult to just as a piece solo to move by himself because he is getting a little older and there probably is some people that are like, Hey, you know, what's going to happen with the Titans. He's got a lot of carries the last couple of years. He doesn't necessarily catch the ball. So it might be like a, a big piece in a big trade. Yeah. But I, I can also see fine in a trade partner who was like, Oh damn, this dude just crushed. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a running back away I'm missing from, piece. Yeah. And let me give you, you know, what you're asking asking for him. So I think this is a pretty decent time to sell Derrick Henry. So we said we would keep tabs on kind of what's going on with this youth here. Three rookies in the top 12 uh, ADP here. Dobbins then is coming in to start this next round, which we're about to move in at 13. Five rookies in the second round uh, for a total of eight in the top 24. And then four sophomores in the top 24. Um, so that's a total of 12 players first or second year or 12 first or second year players in the top 24. That's 50% for the math nerds out there. I think 50% is good. Well, if you're talking about youth dominating the first two rounds of an NFL draft, 50%, that's a, that tells you where we're heading. Right. And that's a testament to both of the last classes, really. I mean, this last class was incredible, but the, the, the class before it was was really good, too. So it's just shows you the influx of talent the NFL just had. And it just seems like there's this huge group of players that are pushing out and all of a sudden they're like old. And then there's this whole new crop of players that are super young and they're what's mostly scattered about the first couple of rounds of the ones that are studs. And uh, you got to feel really good if you have one of these young guys on your squad. Yeah. All right. Well, kicking off round two, we got J.K. Dobbins. Like I said, um, he takes the spot at 13. And then that was where Miles Sanders was. And he is going to drop down all the way to 20. So maybe some buy on Miles Sanders. Obviously, there's some thought that Doug Peterson's out of there. Maybe that committee's out of there. Uh, but it could also say the new regime comes in and brings in another running back. And Miles Sanders is back into running back purgatory. Right. Uh, which has always been the reason on this show that we've been hot or cold on Miles Sanders. It wasn't the talent. It was usage and you know when he's right and good and the offensive line's all right you know they're he's fantastic throat right man everybody just guaranteed him the workhorse role when he got drafted there and it was like hold on that's not what their track record shows they want to do and then it didn't play out that well although that first season at the end of the year they didn't have anybody healthy so they had to let him cook and he did well and if they were going to make him the workhorse back I'm in. This is a discount. But like you said, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what their right. next regime is going to do. I don't, they could bring in a good running back and it just be like, damn, you know, so right. probably still sure. kind of shine from Miles Sanders unless you I, know, I'm buying the, the value well, dropping. I'm in. I bought him right. right at the end of the of last season. So I'm, I'm sure I'm buying. if you can get a discount like this is showing you there is a discount. Um, and if you can get him cheap enough, uh, I'm fine with that. All right, so Zeke falls out of the first round for the first time in a long time. He was pick 11, dropped down to 22. Um, we, we saw what Zeke could do with Dak in there and a, some semblance of an offensive line through the first five weeks. He was absolutely crushing. Um, and we've just seen basically bottom of, of Zeke's value and bottom of Zeke's uh, performance on the field here. And, uh, you know, you can love Pollard as much as you want. He's the must own handcuff of all handcuffs right now. Cause he is good. But I mean, Zeke's paid a lot of money. He's going to be there probably for a while and get his load. And when everybody's in there and that offense is doing what it should be doing, Zeke's going to be just fine. So I'm definitely still picking Zeke. If you're going to give me Zeke at this discount, I'm in. Right. Yeah. And even as the resident Zeke hater here, I think this is too low for Zeke's value to be at because people don't, this is recency bias, right? He didn't perform well. So obviously he sucks. And it's like, well, right. if you don't know the situation, what's going on there, then then you're not paying attention. And so if someone wants to devalue him, 
I'll, I'll I'll pick up some Zeke on the on this this huge slide here from being like the second or third or fourth, right? Like the third, fourth, fifth player taken overall. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and like we said last week or two weeks ago, whenever we did the last show, um, if you it's do not a good Zeke, time to sell him. not a good time. Wait till you get into the season and he's doing his thing. Right. Uh, Chubb jumps from fifteen to fourteen, knocking Ceh Clyde Edwards Elair. Down to 19. Uh, Diggs flies up the chart from 34 to 15, as well as he should have. Um, right. He is absolutely crushing. Um, you could make a case for Diggs being in the first round uh, right now. And if he, if they go to the Super Bowl and win it, or even there, and he keeps going, there's a very good chance that that happens because everyone's going to continue to see him. Um, he is Calvin, like going to be 27, so he's getting yeah. up there a little bit. And he's a bit but he's a around Eagle. Tyree Kill age, you know. And if Josh Allen's going to be producing like he's producing. Yeah, I think he's signed up there for like three more years. So he could be going into his 30th year and then be a free agent, I think. Um, So I think he's got like three more seasons with the Bills. And I mean, Josh Allen looks like a freaking stud. Um, Yeah. Which he, no, he is a stud. So let's just put that to rest. Calvin Ridley moves up uh, to the 17th spot from 28. So a big jump from him. Like we talked about earlier uh, in another podcast, he made me a believer this year. So I'd be, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, after getting some late season burn acres uh, just jumped up from 45 to 23. Uh, so that's, that's a huge jump. And there's plenty of people now who say, Oh, is this the RB one? Just like some people are saying Swift, is this the RB one? Um, people like to just tweet things. Yeah. So, I mean, acres, acres <laughs> is like pretty good. Throw, just look at the president. It seems, <laughs> it seems like, it seems like, uh, you know, well, not the Rams, anymore. The Rams Sorry. found a good, yeah, the Rams found a you know a good player here, uh, but maybe it doesn't seem like they're they've been a little reluctant to just make one guy the guy since the Todd Gurley thing. So we may see as Daryl Henderson comes back, who had a pretty good season if you look at just the stats. Um, we may see a little bit of a timeshare there, so that makes me a little hesitant to jump all in on Acres, um, even though I know the talent's there and I like the Rams' offense. Um, I, I think the talent is there and you haven't even seen him get real loose. Although I did see some like PFF stat that showed that he was like basically getting mad yards after contact. Um, but the way that the season played he out, small. he looked small early on. And, and the way it played out for the Rams was that he got injured early yeah. and Henderson was healthy. So then Henderson came in and crushed and he looked like the future of the Rams backfield. And then he got hurt and acres finally got healthy and came in and started producing the same way. And yeah. so it's a testament to how much people love acres that he was even at 45 back in December because like he wasn't doing anything for most of the season and people still were just like, I've got to get acres and testament to those guys who were all about him. Um, and, and he finally is showing you, you know, some, some light here at the end of this tunnel, but I mean, still 23 overall, like that's really high. Antonio Gibson is one below him and I'd rather have Antonio Gibson all day over acres. Um, because Acres, like I said, he hasn't even he hasn't even freaked at all. He hasn't cooked. He's just been yeah. doing. He's just been getting what's there and looking I mean, pretty decent. But he hasn't broken off. Had some a big log. game. Has had some big game logs. He hasn't had a big, big long touchdown. You know, like he did in college. Like in college, he was just running into the back of defend, or running into the linemen, and running into defenders all game long. And all of a sudden, he busts a seventy-five yard touchdown off, and and it was like, oh, finally, he made his day. And you haven't seen that really in the NFL. Whereas with Antonio Gibson, every single play he touches a ball, it looks like he's about to house it. Like it just looks like he's about to freak every play, and we haven't even seen acres freak so yeah people are gonna like that jay wayne anyway uh yeah i'm just i'm a little concerned about maybe usage boot going forward of being no thumbs down me hit me in the comments (laughs) yeah uh so let's move to round three aaron jones michael thomas scary terry austin eckler all fall out of the second round from this uh end of the season adp to off season adp here um, so moving into round three, Aaron Jones is at 22. He was, uh, or went from 22 to 25. Michael Thomas is down six spots from 20 to 26. Michael Thomas's sh- reign at the top was short, like leprechauns <laughs> shout out to Christopher <laughs> Wallace there. Um, but coming out now that, you know, there was, what did a, he, he missed, rhyme he missed, leprechauns with? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to yeah. start doing the whole thing, but yeah. Um, 
injuries were looking like that could have been a big part of what Michael Tommy missed eight weeks. Now they're saying, you know, he might, he's, he's having surgery surgeries. On the um, and I think, you know, big co pointed out on the last show that Michael Thomas had like 19, 19 and, and just under 10 with, with Taysom Hill in there. So he could still be a viable option and his, him being at two or three or four or five for the last year or two. Uh, this is, I think, good value from Michael Thomas. I still think he's a good player. He'll probably be fine with who's ever there. Like you said, Sean Payton's there. They, they, they're in cap hell, uh, the saints, but <clears throat> I got some they faith in what they're going to do. So much money, but yeah, I mean, not nah, that's, they didn't pay him so much money, but that's part of the reason. Um, I think you'll see Michael Thomas value go down even more as his option yeah. goes. Like, because Drew Brees, like, they didn't know if Drew Brees was going to come back or not. You assumed he wasn't going to come back, but he hadn't announced retirement at the time this ADP came out. So, like, there's going to be a new quarterback there, whether it's Taysom Hill or not. It's just the narrative is just going to keep. And then he's got this injury and he's coming back. Can he come back from injury? And he didn't, you know, perform that well this whole year and didn't crush and was hurt. And I could see it slipping even more. So, it looks like a huge value on Michael Thomas right now. Yeah. Uh, so scary Terry, Tara McLaurin uh, from 24 to 32. I'm scooping him up if I can. I love that guy. Uh, Austin Eckler from 21 to 28, a guy who, you know, how could you know Herbert was going to come in? I was a little questionable on taking the Eckler in the second round this year, but, you know, I'm, I'm okay with scooping up some Eckler at, in the 28 range. Your boy T Higgins from 29 to 37. So a value drop for him. Uh, James Robinson, another rookie value drop, 26 to 30. Um, Kittle finally jumping Jason Ke- or uh, yeah, Jason Kelsey trying to dr- <laughs> jumping Travis Kelsey uh, from Kittle's at 27. Kelsey's coming in at 31. Um, previously, they were basically flip flopped, as you can see on the graphic. Um, yeah, no Mahomes. issue with Kittle. No issue with Kittle jumping Kelsey. I do have the issue with T Higgins slide. Like what? Why? And then and then this is probably before you saw him just finish the year out pretty much just as strong as he played the whole time without Joe Burrow. Yeah. Like he was still out there. Scary, the open scary minute there. Scary minute there at the end. I think it was maybe the last game or the second to last game where he went down in the open field, just non-contact, but it didn't seem like at the end it was anything super serious. So, I mean, but once, T is once, T once undervalued, down, severely right. undervalued with right. T Higgins. Once Burrow went down, I benched T in the one league I had him in and he just, I was every week I was like, Oh, I could have played T. Probably should have yeah. played T. Like get, T, get he's more just, of the story with no quarterback. Huge value. T Higgins, baby. More of the story. Probably get some T Higgins. Mahomes checks in first and only quarterback in the top 50. He goes from 29 to 30. Shout out to these drafters for just one quarterback in the top 50 for all six drafts. <laughs> That's the average draft position. Holler. Not, fellas. Holler. I'm, I'm proud of y'all. I'm proud of you, Twitter dynasty drafters. Godwin. Looking like a buy at 33, going to be a free agent coming into the season. Maybe the Bucks are signing, maybe they don't. Either way, Tyler Johnson at 174 uh, for the Bucks should be a buy. Uh, I know he's. We're not really talking about those, but I'm. I'm super little, interested little in buying money there. as cheap, much as I could of him. But I'm also super interested in buying Godwin. Dude's a boss. He's finally, properly rated. Yeah. You know, Godwin followed that DK train where we got on Godwin when it was cheap enough. You know, years ago, we had him as a rookie. We had him as a second year player. Is he worth taking him at the 80 overall ADP? Is it worth taking him at 40 ADP? Yes, yes. Is it worth taking him at 20 ADP? I don't know. Is it worth taking him at 8 ADP? No way. And now he's back down. It's like he's properly rated, maybe a little undervalued. And people are mad at him because he was like struggling catching the ball with a broken finger. Like, and he was still performing yeah. well and they bring in a B and they got Mike Evans. Like it's just <clears throat> not his best games throughout stud. the playoffs here as far as optics, but dude's a stud. Tommy loves him. Tommy just praised him. And then he blew Then, then Godwin blew it, dropped it. Yeah. Um, but bye for Godwin mixing at 35. Yup. Still in holler at your boy. And then David Montgomery, my guy, our guy flying up the charts from 71 to 36 rounding out round Woo. three. That tickles my heartstrings. Oh, yeah. I am excited for my guy, Monty. Oh, hopefully, he's just a jag. Hopefully, uh, yeah, he's a league winning jag. Um, mm, mm. And hopefully, can't Nagy get. can just stay away from play calling if because he's probably bought himself another year, which isn't good for David. Uh, but and Cohen will be coming back. Yeah, not not good for either way. Hopefully but I, that just means we won't ever have to hear from or see Cordero Patterson again. But <laughs> I don't know. So. Love the uh, love the money tickles my tickles my heartstrings like I said and then ending this one Juju out of the third round down into the fourth round from thirty five to forty two 
Um, and then jumping right into the fourth round, I thought the most interesting thing here was a group of wide receivers. Um, they're all a little older, basically. I don't know, Ari Cooper is still 26, but it'll be 27 in June. The rest of those guys are all over 27. Um, but you got Mike Evans at 38, was 39. Amari Cooper, who's at 39, he was 40. A Rob, who's at 40, was 38. Keenan is at 43, he was 37. And Galladay at 47 to 43. All of those guys to me are guys that I'm really interested in putting on the team. Um, Right. Look I'm sure, at the depth. I'm sure and, throughout that list, there's a decent amount of haters out there on those guys for one reason or another. But where they're getting picked right now is perfect for for team building. Like, I love where these guys are falling and where I can get them right now to build a championship winning roster because all these guys can help you win a championship. And Galladay, right. this stud after stud, you just lift it off right there, and you can get them in the fourth round. Right. And Mike Evans healthy looks like just that is Tom Tom Brady's fucking homie. Um, and they just been getting better and um, had a strong season. Galladay uh, didn't really play much. Seemed like he got a little nicked up and was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to sit this Patricia ride out, get another contract somewhere. But when Galladay's out there, he balls. Keenan Allen, Herbert, just a catching machine. Probably the most underrated great player. Uh, never gets any love as like he should. A Rob. The recency bias, the fall right there is because he missed the, the two weeks that you needed him the most. But you can't blame him for that. He certainly got you to the promised land. He just didn't help you bring it home. But and A Rob is a free agent out of that group as, as well as Galladay. So and I love A Rob. All he if he if he's not on your team, you don't realize how fucking awesome that dude is. Just uh, I ho- hope he lands so somewhere steady. great because he's just if he if he had greatness uh, throwing to him or goodness throwing to him, even he would be Decentness. great. He's never even had it. He's had Bordelais, Foles. And Mitchell, what a poor guy! <laughs> poor guy, what did he do to deserve. What yeah, did he do I don't know. Life. So I like that range. That fourth round is super exciting. The only running back in the fourth round is Kareem Hunt at forty-eight right now. Uh, so, and then Darren Waller up from forty-one or up to forty-one from sixty-five. Big Cut was here. He would tell you it's still too cheap. Um, and then a couple other notes here. Um. Judy Higgins, Robinson, Claypool rookies go in the opposite direction of some of those other rookies. All of them dropped in value. Claypool was 49 uh, or is 49 was 44. Um, So all those guys dropped in value. I I don't mind buying any single one of those guys. Um, There's 13 rookies in the top 50 in ADP. Um, That is fantastic. Um, Ayuk is in there as well. He came up from 54 to 44 to get into that top 50 range. Uh, so a uh, great rookie class. It's it's going to be hard to beat that. There's, you know, these rookies are, are uh, have some big shoes to fill, which you can almost guarantee you that that won't happen. There'll be, you know, some bus and it's going to be no combine now looking like, so that's going to hurt some guys and help some guys. Um, no combine. It seems like they canceled it for net. Like they're trying to figure out some other solutions, but virtual uh, like, combine. So be it'll be interesting Run on the treadmill, do the 40 on a treadmill. Like, yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen, but right now it's kind of like up in the air. Uh, Yo, how many analytical people are going to shit their fucking pants if they don't have a combine to basically base all of their shit off of? It's just all going to be market share and BMI college dominator and yeah. breakout age. Yep. I'm down, uh, so I'm down ca- to look at all that stuff. Let me know For what sure. that is, but. Carson, Chris Carson plummets from 70 to 50 or from 51 to 70. Uh, I thought that was a big, big drop off. Just had him. He just jumped out to me that he wasn't around. Just wondering where he was. So that was there. Any, anything else you got to add to this before we get out of here? Well, we only threw 48 up on the board. 59 is clay or 49 is clay. Well, 50s DJ chart. Couldn't quite squeeze it onto the board. Um, some other notables just outside the top 50 Cortland Sutton's at 52. Um, Seems like some value there. Tyler Boyd at 55. That seems like some value. Uh, Debo's down to 61. Tyler Lockett, there's some recency bias at 67. Now, he finished yeah. the year strong. A little old, I guess. And he is, yeah, he's 28. Might be going on 29. Um, Julio's 31 years old at 69. Odell Beckham falls all the way to 71. Um, like, Corey Davis is 78. So there's just a ton of depth that you can build throughout drafts now with these values going down of guys that could 
easily. Jay Wayne, it seemed like you named a lot of receivers there. It's weird. It's almost like you should get some running backs early. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Any more them running backs? But we talked about this a couple times uh, that there are going to be some the the older running back group that was kind of up in this third, fourth, fifth, sixth round of this last draft. So are going to drop all down the David Johnsons and uh, Connors of the world, James Connors, which you know aren't the sexiest picks, but could still help you in your RB two spot or a flex spot or something. So, um, you ready to close up shop and get out of here? Yeah, man. Yes. Hey, so you guys can still hit us up on the Patreon doing a little different these days. We got a discord channel. Uh, that, that's been a lot of fun. There's a lot going on over there. Uh, all sorts of different channels for all sorts of different things. Uh, still giving out some um, exclusive Patreon podcasts and going live every once in a while. Uh, try We were doing it once a month for a little while, but in the off season, once it gets a little closer, we'll probably start doing that again some more. Uh, but the Discord channel has been great. We're in there. The lots of other guys in there talking about commenting, answering questions. Uh, so good little community over there. Much better. Look, we still go through Patreon, but much better than the Patreon setting of of that communication. Mess, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just gotten a lot. We've gotten to know everybody a lot better, and it's been a lot more fun and interactive. Absolutely. Uh, so definitely go check that out. I'm working on a little shop to get T-shirts sold. Um, so you can just go ahead and straight up buy those because we do get a lot of inquiries because it's a decent logo with a decent t-shirt. So we'll see you next time, knuckleheads. And if you didn't like something we said today, let us know in the comments below. No need to thumbs down that thing. But hey, (laughs) y'all thumbs thumbs down stairways to heaven, so I can't pretend to be excluded from that uh, line of thinking. Anyway, thanks everybody for joining us. Till next time. Peace.